All right, so your hair likes to look flat and thin. So here's some products that we use to get fullness and volume every day in my salon. It starts with shampoo. All right, so first rule of volume, you cannot use heavy products because they'll wear your hair down and make it impossible to get volume. If you're using a shampoo that says hydrating or moisturizing on the label, those are heavy. You don't want those to get volume. Instead, you wanna pick a shampoo with a very light formulation that removes all the oil from your hair and doesn't leave anything in there. Those shampoos are going to be labeled volume or volumizing shampoos, but before you use them, you need to know one thing about them. They do not actually give you volume. When I buy a shampoo mm -hmm. that says volume, but it's not gonna give me volume, you're not going to be able to go in the shower, slap some volumizing shampoo on your hair, and come out with all this huge volumized hair. It doesn't work like that. But that doesn't mean that it's not important because it's extremely important. You need the light formulation to be able to hold volume. Because if you're using heavy shampoo and conditioner, goodbye volume, that's never going to work for you. Step one is always using a light shampoo. Styling products. What most of my clients don't realize is that there's actually two types of volume. You have volume at your crown around your top here, and that's normally what people mean when they say volume. But if you have fine hair, you might also want volume throughout the entire length of your hair to give you that fuller, thicker look. And the best product to give you that is actually mousse. But you need to watch out because volume is all about trade-offs. I love mousse. Volume products create volume by leaving a layer of product buildup on the outside of your hair. It looks like this. These sheets of paper represent your hair. When they don't have any product buildup between them, they're flat, completely flat. But when we put volume product between the hairs like this, you get height and volume. And that's great and all, but you gotta watch out because all that product buildup between the hair that gives you volume can make your hair feel gross and crunchy and you'll have to wash it really soon. So like we said, mousse is a great product for getting volume all over your hair, including the length, but leaves a lot of buildup and get kind of crunchy on you. So is it really worth it? It is for our more mature clients who are in their 60s and 70s, and maybe their hair is a little bit on the thin side and they want lots of volume. Mousse is what we're whipping out for those clients. Very strong hair, very good for that. But if you're younger and you just want fresh, touchable volume that's not crunchy, maybe a little bit too much for you. So I'm gonna give you two options here. Moroccan Oil's Volumizing Mousse is the touchable option. This is pretty good volume, not Texas volume or anything like that. And it still gives your hair a pretty good texture you can run your fingers through. But if you want like extreme Texas hair with all this crazy height, you're gonna need something stronger. My go-to back in the day was Red Ken's Stay High, but it's like they're discontinuing every really strong mousse. So honestly, I would just go with something cheap from a drugstore like Aussie if you just want big Texas hair. Because it's terrible, it's gonna make your hair feel terrible. You don't need to spend a lot of money on it. Go for it. If you choose to use one of these mousses, then you're gonna use about a golf ball sized amount because it's not actually that dense. You're just gonna run it through your hair, over your hair, make sure you get it around your crown too, and just apply it like that right before you blow dry it. The thing about mousses, most people don't need something this strong. Unless your hair holds like absolutely zero volume and you can't get any in there, that's the only reason to really use a mousse. Most people are gonna have way healthier, better hair without all that buildup making them have to wash all the time, which brings us to the next option, Goldilocks volume. All right, so Goldilocks came in and was like, mousse is way too much volume for me, I don't like the texture, but if I don't use any product, that's not enough volume for me. So what is there in the middle? The middle option is using a cleaner volume product that doesn't leave all this dirty buildup all over your hair. Most of my clients just want a boost to their volume to make it look fuller and thicker up here around the top of their head. The best product for that is actually a root lifter. This is personally my favorite volume product because you're only putting a little bit of buildup on your hair to actually get the volume. And even then, you're only putting it around your roots instead of having buildup all over the place, blah, everywhere, making everything gross. Goldilocks knows exactly what she's doing. This is the option I recommend it to most people. For root lifters, you only need one option, and my recommendation is this Kenra's Root Lifting Spray. You can see here, it gives plenty of volume, but at the same time, 
doesn't ruin your texture. That's exactly what we're going for. That's what we want. You can't go spraying this around all willy-nilly or else you're gonna put that brill up everywhere. You only want it, your roots. The way you do that when you're applying it is you put little mini parts in your hair to actually expose the roots. You wanna open up the hair, expose the roots, and then spray this guy in there on the roots, roots, roots. I am root. <laughs> You're gonna do this all over the crown of your head. It's almost like you were wearing a crown all along the top. It takes like 27 seconds. Much lift, much volume, very solid list. So solid. At this point, the only thing in your way is you can't just plop these products on and expect your hair to rise like a loaf of bread in the oven. You need to put this into a routine, which is actually really easy. We're gonna go over it right now. By we, I mean me in this bottle, because Leslie's checked out. The routine. All right, so if you went with the root lifter, which I highly recommend for everyone, you still need heat protection from when you're gonna blow dry or blow dry brush your hair. Either one's fine. Which means you need to use, hair homies say it with me, a blow dry cream. And the blow dry cream is awesome, not just because of the heat protection, they also help add more volume all over your hair, including the length, and give your hair a better texture, which will fight against the bad texture the root lifter might give you. How heavy is your cream? The heaviest. <laughs> But not all blow dry creams add volume. Big Blowout is what I recommend for it. It gives you a pillowy, silky texture to the hair. Not as much volume as Root Lifter though. All right, so you went into the shower, you washed your hair. With a volumizing shampoo. With that, and then you came out, you towel dried your hair, you put leave-in conditioner, and then here's what you're gonna do next. You're going in with your Root Lifter first, many parts all around the crown to expose those roots. Spray this on the roots all over, take your 27 seconds. Then you're gonna use your fingers to kind of spread it all over your crown. Then you're gonna go back with your blow dry cream. You're gonna use about a pea sized amount, unless you have extensions or really long hair, and start applying this from the ends, ends, ends up. And then it's time to use either your blow dryer or your blow dry brush. And as you're doing this, you may start to notice that volume is not easy. It's not just automatically happening the way you see on social media. And that's because you need to know a few tricks. Now, I don't usually talk that much about styling because it's actually really difficult, but I'm gonna give you a couple easy things here that are gonna make a big difference when you're trying to get volume. The technique you use here can make a huge change in the volume that you actually get. There's actually a lot of angles and stuff you can work with here to put more volume up into your hair. But let's be honest, your arms probably aren't even gonna bend that way unless you've been practicing for years. So let me show you a quick way to do all of this without any technique. Rollers. The lay. These little guys are Velcro rollers. The brand doesn't matter as long as they're round, very important. These guys are little cheat codes for getting volume. So here's what easy mode looks like. When you're blow drying your hair, you're not just gonna let it fall and be done with it. What you're going to do with each section is you're gonna blow dry it until you feel it starts to get warm. When it gets warm, that means it's done and you wanna stop there. A lot of people are like, oh, it's getting warm. Let me do it again. And it's hot. Oh my gosh, it's hot. They do another pass. It's even, oh my God, why is this so hot? Don't do that, stop, you're gonna burn, that's how people damage their hair, don't do that. When it's warm, you're gonna take that section, put it on this and roll it down from the top all the way down till it hits your roots. What that's doing is setting the hair in an upward position so the hair at the root is going up before it comes down, which is what you call volume. It goes up before it goes down. But remember, it's really important that hair needs to be warm. If it's completely cold, it's not gonna work. It's almost like wax in a candle. When it's warm and hot, you can mold it in whatever shape you want, in this case, up. And then when it cools off, it'll actually stay in that shape and lock it in. Do this wherever you want volume. Tricky, tricky, tricky. No. <laughs> Don't be fooled. Like I said, volume can be really tricky and you don't want to let it fool you, which it will if you don't know this next thing. Whatever volume you have in your hair right after you're done styling it, you can expect to lose 10 to 20% of it in the first hour after you do your hair. That means that you need to put more volume in your hair than you actually want. So when you finish styling your hair, you need to be like a little bit freaked out. You should be like, this is kind of a ridiculous amount of volume. I don't really like this. I think I look silly, but no. That's exactly what you want because that ridiculous volume will calm right back down an hour or so later. 
If you do it the other way around, you aren't gonna have enough volume left over after it settles. You're gonna be all sad faced like, where'd my volume go? Where'd my volume go? Now, there's one more thing that you can potentially do, and this is a little extreme. If you're really desperate, you can go with fake hair and extensions. And if you've thought about this before, you might hear extensions are good to add more fullness, more hair, more fullness, but you really wanna watch out for that because it can be really dangerous. If you have thin hair, those extensions are gonna be tugging really hard on the few hairs that you actually have left, and they may just yank them out. The stylists make a lot of money on extensions, so they're not always gonna tell you that straight up, so you need to watch out for being pushed into something like this. If you're absolutely desperate, one of the options that I would really look into is one of these extension toppers. These pieces that you put like on top of your hair, your hair can be as thin as thin gets, and once you put this thing on, nobody will know. Nobody will have any idea. So extensions can be a good option for some people, but for others, if you have really thin hair, they're just not really feasible. All right, so we went on a ride today, Les. A bumpy volume ride. If you'd like help finding products, check out my recommended product list in the description. It has a hair type quiz, walks you through everything you're gonna need to know. But our time's up today. Have a good one. Thanks for hanging out. Take care.